Hi, my name is Cecile Johnson, CEO of African Development Plan, here today as part of Global City Unity's community outreach to keep you informed about issues affecting the global African community, issues that require us to be united and be on one accord to find solutions. Today's show is about connecting the African diaspora in the USA with Africa. My guest today is one of my favorite people, Dr. Margaret King, who is on faculty at Chicago State University, where she teaches geography and economics. Dr. King is here today in many capacities, the focus of which our discussions will highlight. In October 2014, she was responsible for hosting a huge event that launched the Global Institute of Sustainable Development at Chicago State. Its goal is to inspire global knowledge and service learning. At that time, the Africa Center was also launched. That gathering of over 300 people included students, community members, local, national, and international business people, guests from all over the world, and the African Union Diaspora's Ambassador, Madame Amina Saloum Ali, attended and was part of the ribbon cutting. Our show today is to have Dr. King share her vision, why the Global Institute was formed, and speak on a number of projects she's working on, and show you what a treasure we have here locally at Chicago State, where the student population is majority African American, and how these institutions are critical in not only strengthening the black community locally, but in connecting its students to the world. Dr. King, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. So, Dr. King, you are fondly described as an academician practitioner. Why so? Academician practitioner, I love to teach. Even if I am sick and you put me in the classroom, I'll get well. Because I love to impart knowledge to my students. And I love it when their you know, eyes kind of just light up when they learn. And they're like, I had no idea. This is wonderful. So academician. Um, practitioner, I, bring, I, I break that gap between principles and practice. Uh, what I teach is also what I do. Before mm -hmm. I joined Chicago State uh, full time, I was in consulting, okay. you know, in economic development consulting, mm -hmm. and I still help out uh, you know, as much as I can, and most of my research work are in that area. So I bring what is happening in the field, real life, into the classroom, and actually make students a part of that, so they love it. So that's why I describe as an academician practitioner. That's awesome. We need more of those, I can tell you. <laughs> Thank you. So what necessitated the creation of the Global Institute of Sustainable Development at Chicago State? I have thought of Chicago State for many years. And I see that my students, they know quite a bit about America. Um, but when you talk about issues outside America, and it's not just my students uh, having lived in um, the US for quite a while, mm -hmm. uh, you sort of realize that Americans are very patriotic. And, and, and I love that. Uh, but not too much about the rest of the world, except recently that you are getting involved with Iraq and Iran and all these other things mm -hmm. that uh, folks are more interested about what's happening outside. So in teaching my students, um, the interest came to globalize their minds. I also coordinate international studies at Chicago State University. Mm -hmm. So I have an interest and a passion in recruiting international students. Um, okay. One of the missions of Chicago State University is to develop global citizenship, um, to make the university more globalized. And so I saw that mission and I was trying to look through our campus, what have we really done in these areas, how can I help? And so the idea of starting the Global Institute uh, came to place where we can actually um, have the faculty and the students to engage uh, with each other outside the classroom. So we impact knowledge in a service learning approach mm -hmm. uh, where that academic citadel can answer to the questions of the surrounding communities through projects um, while having classes, again, the academician part of it, uh, but the faculty can actually create projects that are community-based and have students to work on it. So um, they take the knowledge from the university mm -hmm. and actually help the community um, around Chicago State. But at the same time, while working locally, they think globally. globally. So we connect them not only to the immediate community, but also to the global community. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I recently heard of a workshop that you had done on microfinance, mm -hmm. right, as a tool to alleviate poverty. 
and break generational dependency in global minority neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Africa, we see certain patterns as it relates to Millennium Development Goals and poverty. Mm -hmm. But when we look at the black community here, we see some of the same things. Mm -hmm. We have Inglewood with 45% mm -hmm. poverty rate. We have the state of Illinois with 14% poverty rate, but the black community at 31% poverty rate. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about this microfinance and how it ties into the fact that the black community here is almost like shadowing in some ways mm -hmm. uh, an underdeveloped country. Right. Well, the Global Institute has quite, uh, with the name Global, uh, we have institute that, within the institute you have centers that focus on one, um, the continents. Um, not necessarily just the continents, but the regions of the world. Um, so one of the ones that got started with the Global Institute is the Africa Center, okay. uh, which concentrates teaching and service learning and um, cross-cultural exchange, study abroad and all that uh, from the students mm -hmm. from here to, um, to Africa and vice versa. Uh, but we also have the uh, center, uh, which is a microfinance center. Uh, it's an initiative that uh, we started as part of the uh, Global Institute. And because um, about, I think about 85% of our students are African American. Okay. And um, we look at, and many of them are inner city, uh, basically population. And you know all about that. Mm -hmm. And as we just mentioned, 45% poverty rate in Englewood. You know, these are where our students come from. Mm. Um, so financially, we know that in America, if you're not doing well credit-wise financially, you are not in the mainstream of the economy. Right. So the uh, institute came about. We also, I mean, we launched the, inst uh, the center when we launched the Global Institute. And we were blessed to have uh, um, a funder that stepped out, actually PNC Bank, right, and I must right. acknowledge them for that, uh -huh. uh, to say, I'm going to give you this money. So they gave us grant to get the institute started at the, mic I mean, the microfinance center. So what we do uh, with the microfinance is first train our students. So we have series of workshops um, ranging kind of actually four series, the basics of financial management, understanding your finances, and then we move into credit building, understanding your credit, mm -hmm. and then identity identity theft, um, budgeting, and then of course, how to start and run a small business. So small business management and entrepreneurship. So those are all part of the workshops. Um, so the idea is to train our students to first take a hold of their finances. Mm -hmm. And then many of them, of course, we know that the economy had crashed and uh, even though we had slowly, uh, we are getting out of it, uh, it, it's not really showing in statistics when it comes to African Americans. Right. Uh, we're still there at the bottom. So with our students, we try to get them out of that by making them take a look, one of their personal finances and also their credit. Mm -hmm. And so by coming to the workshops, we train them to get that knowledge Knowledge. and the next step is of course for them to take that knowledge and go teach the communities where they come from uh, but also we move into the next stage where they build their credit we actually from the grant we have money uh, to give them where they um, they put the money in their account and use the money and for about 12 months or so they they use the money and keep paying back that is uh, helping to build their uh, FICO scores to be able to get them uh, kind of rebuilt or establish uh, credit for them and so we tie the same thing while they're doing it, it it's a process where we finish with their school the students we're training them and they go to their community and then the next thing is to um, unite the community with Africa so if we help them to build their credit, they're going to be credit worthy. Right. We're preparing them to be able to get microfinance okay. to start and run successful businesses. But what does that mean? You can only be as rich as the community you sell to. So the idea is, yes, we are acting locally, but we're thinking about connecting them with Africa. And of course, you know, Africa has a lot of natural resources. Right. And if you are part of that society, why not in, not in an exploitative way right. as we have have had in the past but to you know unite and in a mutually beneficial way right. uh, the African Americans the African diaspora can actually connect with their root enjoy part of the resources the natural resources in a way that benefits the continent mm -hmm. and also benefits the 
let's call it global Africa. Right. All right. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, this example, you talk about microfinance here, mm -hmm. and, and definitely we need that here mm -hmm. in the black community. Mm -hmm. But I also know that you are part of uh, Economic Recovery Institute and Women for African Development, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was fascinated to learn about the widows, women, orphans, and vulnerable children. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that in not all cases, but in some cases, you know, when women um, become widowed, mm -hmm. um, they may end up having very extenuating circumstances very where they're even put out of their homes mm -hmm. and, and they fall into poverty. So tell me, how are you using the microfinance program to help people in Nigeria? Ah, wonderful. That's a long story. <laughs> Maybe we can start from what actually got economic recovery started. Okay. Uh, I think in 1992, uh, quite a while, I was a, a student at uh, UIC. Okay, mm -hmm. I was working on my doctorate in economic development, you know, planning, and I pick up a textbook. Okay, it talks about um, economic development. All right, and I'm looking at that. Well, I'm going to get this skill so I can be marketable in America, and maybe when I go to Africa, I can also be marketable. But I don't see anything about Africa. Mm. You know, so, uh, well, we need to rewrite the name of this book and call it Economic Development in America. Right. right. <laughs> so, so as, and there were quite a few Africans who came to get graduate degrees so they can go back to Africa and kind of transfer the technology, which was what I did uh, on my dissertation. So, and I thought, well, if it is not there, someone had told me, actually my pastor had told me, she said, you be the example that you want to see. Right. You know, either there's something then that you can't find it, why don't you be there? Right. So that's how we created um, economic recovery. Okay. And also when we saw that I, I first came and I got very excited you know about meeting my African-American you know brothers and sisters but I saw there was a little bit of uh, okay you know put you out there a little bit I didn't quite understand that uh, but I did know again that's a different thing we can talk about mm -hmm. with colonial mentality mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. so but I said well there are differences here but there are also similarities why don't we begin to see the Africans from the continent and the Africans in the diaspora why don't we see what are the similarities? What are the differences? Why don't we have a conversation? Right. Why don't we get to understand each other and come closer? So that was the idea when um, uh, economic recovery got started. So we had some of those uh, women, um, Africans, mm -hmm. who were in the program. And so I asked them, why don't we get together? So we started a symposium and seminars, and we bring in our diaspora Africans, and we started talking about our similarities. And, you know, see, but once you do that, you see that we open up, right? right? We, right, are, right. we all understand mm -hmm. each other more, mm -hmm. and then uh, we know there is a need for us to work together because united we stand divided. We, we fall. fall. Yeah. Uh, so that got us started. And then after the symposium and getting to understand more, so we started getting into programmatic issues. What are the programs that we can run um, to help us? And then come, of course, came the microfinance, which um, has been my interest. Yeah. And so um, there is something that you call OSUSU. Uh, that OSUSU basically is circle funds. All right? It is based on trust. It is what you would call um, a developing world concept, mm -hmm. which in Nigeria, um, you know, you know about that. And if you do know about the Bangladesh model, that's actually where that came from. The Grameen? Uh, Grameen, the Grameen um, um, model, mm -hmm. bank model. So a group of friends get together, you know, um, decide what time, maybe weekly or monthly, they come up with a, a certain amount. And let's say if we decide we're going to do a hundred dollars each, all right. right? And we are 10 and we trust each other. Every week we're going to have a thousand dollars right there right. that one of them would not be able to have. Mm -hmm. And so we just give it to one person here. You got a thousand dollars, get a business started. Right. All you need to worry about is how you're going to produce only a hundred dollars the next week so that somebody else can get. Right. So that way, based on trust, everybody um, gets the idea and you see it helps the people. So it's like um, that concept that got brought imported to urban America. Uh, so we, we started the microfinance approach and, you know, kind of try to uh, train our people and helping them to using the trust approach to be able to um, support each other. So um, I know that would be a whole long, you know, this thing for us to talk a lot more about that. But it has really helped um, um, here. But even while we're here, so we focus at one time, we focus completely on the um, young people finishing college 
when um, they will want to go and look for work in Nigeria um, that were not there, government jobs that were not there. So we asked them and said, why don't you grab the skill that you have just learned from school? Right. Let's work with you online right. and they're very savvy on, um, you know, with computers. Technology, yeah. right. <laughs> okay, let's help you create a business plan and we can put you on international donors list or contribute money, get you to become an employer labor. And that has worked so well. And then right now we move into another group that has been very needy, the widows. The widows we right. call the program WOVC, the Widows, Orphans, and Vulnerable Children. Right. Um, if you can take care of the women, they can take care of the family. Right. Um, so um, if we started with the women, of course we included um, the widows, we included the women. Because uh, we realized that when um, a husband dies, sometimes the women are accused as if they are the ones that killed their husband. And it's basically poverty. Right. Uh, you see, the family will want to drive the woman away, maybe the children, so they can take the wealth of the of the man. Right. Um, so uh, we've also been involved uh, with policy, um, which has actually helped. We're not quite there yet, but it has helped to uh, stop those kinds of activities. Right. But we decided, well, we're going to work with you on microfinance. What do you know how to do? What kind of trade do you want to get into? So um, focusing on the poorest of the poor, we give them some um, capital, they get their business going, but we work through microfinance bank who work with the women you know, right. directly, right. And, and many of them are doing very well. That is awesome. I, I want to tell you something. You mentioned Osusu. Uh -huh. And in Jamaica, we have Susu. Really? So Jamaicans who come to America, uh -huh. um, same thing. We had barriers to, to you know, access credit. to capital and capital. credit when we first came. Mm -hmm. And so we did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ten people would come together. Mm -hmm. They would decide on how much. And we call it a hand. Mm -hmm. And they did exactly that. I didn't know. And we call it Susu too. <laughs> okay? That's so, interesting. Okay. So you see, a lot of the things in the diaspora we have that are African. You right. know, the Africans, they still maintain their culture. It right. might be many generations, you know, but it's still there because the African culture is very strong. Yeah, yeah. it is. It definitely is. Mm -hmm. So when you, um, prior to joining CSU, you established MetroCon International, right? Sure did. In incorporated. So, so tell us a little bit, um, how does this, or this corporation um, impact uh, its global vision? What does it want to do? And how does it impact black-owned companies? I've been very interested. You can see I've been into quite a <laughs> bit of things and they're still going on. Yeah. Uh, before, of course, I uh, uh, joined Chicago State, uh, we had started MetroCon um, in 2000, somewhere around then, uh, as a consulting firm. Uh, the idea of MetroCon was, uh, is an international consulting firm. We do the same thing because that's my area. That's all I know how to do, right. uh, international development, economic you know, development with community planning. Um, so uh, we do consulting. We started out with um, some neighborhoods here in the U.S. Um, to try to help out in terms of economic analysis and uh, looking at economic leakages. Where is the money going? Where and and what kinds of businesses should be attracted to those uh, uh, communities? Mm -hmm. And then we focused on minority-owned companies. How can we put them on major projects? Um, sometimes we hear that, oh, well, they, uh, they don't have the skills, they don't have the, but you turn around, it says very, you know, so many African American owned companies, or call it uh, companies that are owned by uh, African uh, people with African descent, uh, from African descent. And so, uh, but they need the help. They right. need their consulting help, and not many of them, of course, can afford a consultant. So, uh, what we did to impact that was to, of course, get into uh, the issue of the set aside a percentage for minority owned companies and make sure we put them. Our focus had been in construction, engineering, professional services mm -hmm. um, type. So, um, once projects come up, we will find those uh, companies that have the skills and then assist them with hiring the best of the minds. Uh, whether it is civil engineer or uh, structural, any of those, and we put them. And we had been successful in helping them to uh, get some projects. So what I'm basically hearing is that what we need here is there are set-asides, we're not utilizing them mm -hmm. as we should, mm -hmm. um, by coming together, so mm -hmm. this issue of unity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, bringing our best minds as a collective we cannot compete. You cannot compete. I yeah. mean, you, not by yourself. Right. You are, but when you have a team together, and I do believe in the Bible that says, I mean, two heads are better than 
one. Than one. That's right. All right, That's you right. bring the two minds together, you're better. And of course, the issue too of diversity. Right. You are so. That's, uh, that's the idea of that, it makes us more successful. Yes, yeah, so as we look at solutions in our community, right mm -hmm. now we have 92% black youth unemployment, right? Mm -hmm. We have um, unemployment when it comes to black people in the state of Illinois, double and two and a half Staggering. times, mm -hmm. and, and, and when you two and a half times that of white, mm -hmm. right? And so even in a time of recovery, we've not seen much recovery, not because in our own communities, we don't own a lot of our businesses. So what you're actually talking about mm -hmm. is building capacity. Building capacity, uh -huh. building capacity and becoming an employer of labor. You know, I see a different group, um, even the Jews, as we talk about, you know, at some point you feel you are discriminated against. It's a problem, right. and we understand that. But sometimes if we focus on the problem too much, we lose it, Right. all right? Um, the problem is then, there's a time to talk about it. And I do believe if you can define a problem very well, it is half solved. That's right. So everything has its own place. There is a time to talk about the problem, but why are we talking about it? Let's talk about it in a way to provide solutions. That's right. All right? Mm -hmm. So let's define this problem. Yes, there is poverty. What are we going to do about it? Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we look at all of these things that are available for us. And let me tell you this. We are very blessed in this country. But we don't see that. Right. Because we do not. We, are, we basically are here. If you go outside of this country That's and right. you come back in, you will thank God that we have opportunities here that we can tap from. And that's why you see some other people come in and they get successful because they know where they have come from. So that's what we need to do with our brothers and sisters here. Right. Yes, there are problems, but let's focus on the solution. Let's see how can I help you? How can we come together? How can we uh, start businesses? Let's stop looking for business. You know, we can put our resources together and get something started. I, I know about microfinance. I know some people may argue, well, is this a welfare approach or economic mm -hmm. development? But the issue is if you cannot learn to crawl you can't start standing and then walking and then flying so we've got to start somewhere and begin to move and many of the businesses that we have started a small business right. so we need to pull our resources together I want to say this again united we stand right. divided we fall and God can help us well I, I believe that you're saying quite a lot because mm -hmm. as it relates to the African diaspora the African continental African who mm -hmm. comes to America is mm -hmm. actually one of the highest educated Mm. group in the country yes higher more higher educated than the Asians right okay mm -hmm. and this concept of unity where we begin to look at ourselves as brothers and sisters which mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. I used to say to people when the ship was coming mm -hmm. some of us stopped off in the Caribbean uh -huh. some of us came here Absolutely. and some went to Central and South America uh -huh. so the bottom line is we're still the same people yes, right we are. Yes, now the dollar spends six hours in the black community mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. a lot of Africans who do come here mm -hmm. and Caribbean people right the African diaspora are entrepreneurial minded. Yes, they are. The understanding is that you don't leave your country to come somewhere to do nothing. To do nothing. So it's nothing personal. Mm -hmm. It's just that you can't go back home with nothing. Well, let's even heart. talk about Nigeria. <laughs> if I came here, my dad, my, my parents studied here in this country, and when, when, when I was, they came back, all right? So when I was coming, my, my father called me. He said, Margaret. And, and when he calls me Margaret, you kind of tremble because he will call me pet name like Maggie, Meg and all that. So you sit up. He has something important to tell you. He said, you're going to America. He said, America is an academic market. If you do not buy from there, you're not going to buy from anywhere in the world. So be wise. My dad was not talking much. He said, and, and, and there is a tradition, you know, in my culture. So he took the sign of my compound where I was born, and he sort of just saw it in like a piece of cloth and gave me. He said, take this sign. This is where you were born. I want you to go to America and return this sign to me with a terminal degree. Mm. There was no mincing of words. Mm -hmm. I knew what that meant, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm so thankful to God that I was able to do that. I was able to go, you know, get a PhD, and then I took the sign with drinks and, you know, everything traditionally and gave it to my father. Mm -hmm. So the point is, if we are not coming together and supporting each other, if I'm not doing well, if I go back to Africa, people will say, so you went to America and did what? That's and right. came back empty-handed? <laughs> and so that's the same thing we yeah. want to impact to our brothers and uh. sisters here. Okay, just seeing somebody else surviving and, and, and trying to do better, it should motivate us. Right. And not for one person to do and then leave the community impoverished. We want to grow together. So let's pull each other up. Right. 
Well, I, the vision that I see is a, is a vision where the African diaspora comes together, that's some of the work African Development Plan does, mm -hmm. and brings our people together. And as far as it comes to economic development in the south side and west side of Chicago mm -hmm. and, and around America, I see us pulling together the tools that our continental brothers, our brothers from the Caribbean and South America, as well as our African Americans here, mm -hmm. and sharing. Right. You talked about cross-cultural exchanges, Absolutely. us being able to, there was a study called Black versus Black, mm -hmm. and it was a small study down in, down in uh, Maryland, and they, they talked to Nigerians, Ghanaians, African Americans, and people from the Caribbean, Jamaica, mm -hmm. I think Barbados and Trinidad, like mm -hmm. the English-speaking countries, right? Mm -hmm. And the findings of that were not good. It mm -hmm. said that we had a lot of misconceptions about each yeah. other, distrust, etc. Mm -hmm. And one of the recommendations that they gave was to have cross-cultural things mm -hmm. where we would go there and teach, we mm -hmm. would go there and vacation, we would just begin to share each other's culture and history. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm listening to you, I'm seeing that. I'm right. seeing someone who came, who heard something, mm -hmm. but decided, no, I'm going to find out who my brothers and sisters Absolutely. are and what we're going to do about that. Right. Well, we're getting close to um, um, ending mm -hmm. here today. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me ask you, moving forward, what is your vision about African development? African development, as a matter of fact, not too long ago, we started, apart from the Africa Center that we have at Chicago State University, we're supposed to do this, but with a focus on our students and engaging them uh, within the university and, of course, outside to the community and globally, mm -hmm. and more so to Africa. We have um, classes that we teach our students and getting them prepared to understand African culture before they travel over there. Mm -hmm. uh, but more so, we just started what we call Global Africa Institute with yeah. Metro and the consulting firm. The idea is to get the best of minds of the diaspora. As a matter of fact, you know they're all about <laughs> that. Maybe you can even tell me a lot yeah. more. Uh, but they, we have the uh, agenda. Um, if you want to, uh, the uh, United um, African Union mm -hmm. agenda 2063. 63. Right. You know all about that. Yes, um, African, African, African Development Plan has been calling for a 50-year plan for Africa and its diaspora, and that includes some of the work we've been doing here in first uniting the people and then moving on to the comprehensive needs assessment and the, the database that begins to track our experts and our skills mm -hmm. and, and, and deal with leadership development. Mm -hmm. um, the African Union last year, in 20, actually in 2013, um, launched what they call Agenda 2063. Mm -hmm. And that goal is to bring, is the Africa we want. So in right. this book, they they highlight, you can find this on the web, they highlight um, what has been going on in the diaspora, because the diaspora did have input in it, mm -hmm. and what they would like to see, right? Mm -hmm. And so for the, not the first, but it's a continuation of agenda that Absolutely. they have had, mm -hmm. where we begin, we, because mm -hmm. I'm included in that, I'm part of the sixth region, right? Mm -hmm. We in the United States. Um, are part of the solutions for our, for the continent. Mm -hmm. And so the work that we want to do and the work that we are doing mm -hmm. is about that. Right. So, so yeah, that's why uh, we try to get the best of minds and, and you're part of it, you know, being our uh, sister, you know, from the Caribbean and I'm from the continent and Dr. Gail Fraser being mm -hmm. part of the team. And we're searching those minds from what, that's what we call them Global Africa, Global Africa. So with the Institute, we get us together and we reunite with the continent to try to promote and make sure the MDG goals, you know, for 2015, mm -hmm. uh, we they were not met. That. They were not met. So we want to make sure that right. we try as much as possible uh, to meet these goals and try to eradicate, if not completely, poverty uh, in, in Africa, African countries, but at least we ameliorate, you know, right. the distinct of it and try to develop the continent using the expertise of global Africans. Well, thank you, Dr. Kinn. I want to thank you for coming in and sharing with us and all the work you're doing on the many projects and um, being part of that solution, right? Again, thank you so much for coming in. My, My name pleasure. is Cecile Johnson. I'm CEO of African Development Plan, and I want to thank Global City Unity's Community Outreach for giving us this opportunity to speak to the global African community on issues affecting our community as we find solutions and build unity. Mm -hmm.